So, um, you know, I, I, I share this with my audience all the time, Josh, is how do you continue to grow and build and stack the, on your skills that you have? Because, you know, you can't stay still for too long. The tech industry yeah. continues to evolve. We're, we're already seeing, you know, uh, uh, artificial intelligence and the rapid pace that has gone on and how it has accelerated since ChatGPT in November of last year. I mean, like I use the thing every single day now, right? It's helped me with, yeah. you know, the my job on a daily basis and create efficiencies mm-hmm. that I never would have thought exist, right? So mm-hmm. it, there's a method to your madness. So I want to give you credit on that. So let's talk about this, Josh, right? Like nice. <laughs> what part of the tech field do you like the most? Because you went and did the computer science piece. A lot of people ask me all the time, hey, Antoine, I'm going to go to school. Can I do a, should I do computer science? I'm like, it depends, right? Doing me wrong, computer science would be a great degree to get into and to get. And if you really want to be technical or you really want to have a strong technical foundation, but there's others that exist out there like ITM, uh, management information systems, right? Information systems, information science. Uh, talk about from your perspective, what field do you like the most? And also what do you encourage others to potentially pursue if they were going to go with a formal education? Yeah, that's hard one. Um, yeah, I, so if someone is like really undecided, um, I kind of recommend that you just get like a general, like the IT general degree, because that, that pretty much like exposes you to everything. Like you do some coding in there, like some database management, there's some cybersecurity and there's just, there's a lot of like everything in there. And when, when you do something like anything, you kind of learn about yourself, like what you like and what you don't like. Mm. And I, I highly recommend, like, if you go into tech, um, you can kind of make a, you know, a lot of money anywhere. Um, but making a lot of money becomes way easier if you can stomach the thing that you're doing or even better yet, if you like the thing that you're doing. So, Mm. Mm. um, just, I recommend going general and then figure out what you like and then just pick, kind of pick that and then, um, you know, pivot along the way and just try to stick to doing the thing that you enjoy doing, I guess is would be my advice for that. I love that. I absolutely love that, Josh. Right. And, and that's something that I, I, when I educate uh, folks and mentor and, and, and coach folks as well, too, especially the younger folks where they're like, oh, what sort of degree should I get? Or, you know, why information systems, why management information systems? Because it is broad. You do get the exposure of database management, web development, software engineering, coding. You get a taste of it all, and which ultimately can lead you down to a path where you uh, can choose, right? And dive deeper into that field based on what you've learned. I chose the field of, or the career as a software engineer, because I must say in college, when I would get a coding assignment, I went and did it that same day. I was amped up for it. I loved VB.net. I loved, uh, visual basics with, uh, visual basics Four, and I loved the C sharp. And I was just like, you know what? Like, if this is what I like to do, then I must say I want to do this for my career. And that's what made me go a little bit deeper into the software engineering space and actually apply for a software engineer role uh, while I was a senior. And, and it led me to starting my career as a software engineer. And it sounds like you're, you're basically saying the exact same thing, right? Like go to school, get a degree, a worthwhile degree, first of all, uh, that's going to allow for you to get the exposure you need. And then you can actually start to pivot along the way or either not pivot, but to narrow down your focus based on what it is that you ultimately like. Yeah. 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 That's good. That's good. So, and, 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 and now Josh, like a lot of the things that you talk about into on your channel is cybersecurity. You talk about cybersecurity quite a bit. Talk to us about, your experience in cybersecurity, and then we're going to get into, you know, the uh, uh, the what, why cybersecurity, why why people should get into the field of cybersecurity. It's a big field, a lot of demand, and so forth. But I want to hear from your perspective, your background in cybersecurity, and then we want to talk to the audience about how this is a fantastic field that they should consider. Sure. Yeah. So my. My first like actual 
um, this is kind of important too. So my first actual job in cybersecurity with like, you know, security in the title was in, I think it was like 2017. Um, my first position was like a, a senior cybersecurity analyst, um, which is interesting because it was my, my first position. I had some IT experience already, um, but I, I just applied for this job and I ended up getting it. So that kind of, um, I want to encourage people to apply to like a lot of stuff, even if they don't think they can get it. But mm. um, that job was kind of, so there's like a lot of different domains in security. There's like, you know, identity and access management, like device security, physical security, like network security and then security operations. Like there's a lot um, governance, but that job that I had was, it's kind of like security operations. So I would, um, I kind of managed and monitored the SIM for this kind of small bank um, for when we had some kind of security alerts that would come up. And then I also managed like, and set up the DLP system, like data loss prevention. So if somebody, you know, emailed like 500 social security numbers, like outside of the company, um, it would get flagged, right? And I would have to review it, like this kind of thing. It was just like kind of general security operations. Um, and then after that, I had a couple different jobs at like a, lo like a local government in Washington and King County, where I was doing more so like governance risk and compliance. So basically it would just be doing like risk assessments and security reviews for little projects and initiatives that like that the government like King County was doing. Um, we would like, you know, make sure the system they were trying to build or buy was secure. And then if it wasn't, we would try to bring it in line, you know, as much as we could while still allowing the business to function, um, that kind of thing. And then after that job, I kind of pivoted a bit into like development mixed with um, cybersecurity as a contractor at Microsoft. If you, if you look up Microsoft cloud security benchmark, um, I was like, um, one of the original people to kind of work on that. And then um, I kind of switched into the software development side and still worked on that project, but I was doing more so like automation um, in kind of facilitating the development of the security benchmark through like, you know, just helping automate things, I, I guess I could say. So that, that's kind of my my career, I guess, in a nutshell in terms of cybersecurity. No, that's that's dope. Like that's just, that's dope. The operation side of it, right? But also the development side as well too, right? That's that's pretty awesome, right? And, and that's, that's well, for the people that's actually watching this, this Josh, um, mm -hmm. you're leveraging all the things that you've learned in your studies and you are applying them in the real world. Now, one of the things I kept hearing you say is contract, contract, contract. You mentioned uh, you work yeah. for Microsoft for, in contract roles. Right. Mm -hmm. Why was that the path for you versus more of like a, a full time role? Uh, I'm glad you asked this because I, I w talk about this a lot and I want people to um, at least, I guess, acknowledge what I'm about to say. So I, I kind of notice a trend like people are like scared of contracts because they're like scared of, you know, their job being they're scared of getting fired or whatever. But in my in my opinion, um, you're, you're not really any more, I don't know, you're not really any more safe as a contractor than a full-time employee, as you've seen with like Twitter and Google, like all these other big companies. <laughs> and the reason like I, and it's ironic because I was a contractor at Microsoft when like 12K people got, got let go. And like, I didn't get let go for, you know, whatever reason, mm. um, or my department didn't, get, didn't suffer, you know, cuts, but um, I, I prefer contract roles. This is going to sound bad, but you know, I'm going to be candid here. Um, you tend to have like less responsibility, uh, as a contractor or like less expectations because, you know, usually you'll, you get paid, um, hourly and then usually they don't dump a bunch of random stuff on you. You usually get hired for like a specific reason, like to, you know, fill some specific role or augment some team in a specific way versus if you're a full timer, it's like a little bit it's a little bit more like they ex kind of expect more of you and you're more so like salaried ish. Usually it kind of depends, but um, I prefer that because there's, it's more easier for me to deal with. Um, also it's way easier to get hired as a contractor than a full-time person because mm. the, you know, the org, they, they feel like, Oh, if they don't work out, we can just like let them, let them go at like the end of their contract. It's kind of like an excuse for them. Um, so it's easy to get hired as a contractor. So for an example of this is my, my last job at Microsoft, um, like the, the manager, 
they already like kind of knew who I, who I was anyways. And I didn't even interview. They just like, I was interviewing at like Google and Amazon, like Tenable, like already. And it's like absolutely exhausting. But Microsoft was like, oh, like we will, we'll bring you on for, you know, um, I, I said I wanted 180K and I would just drop all my other interview, pro all my interviews. And they were like, yeah! okay. And then they just like hired me. And I, I didn't have to like, I didn't have to interview. So con I don't know. It's way easier to get jobs as a contractor. And, and it's nice because like a lot of people are scared of it, right? So if you're kind of the person who takes those things that like other people don't want to do, um, it ends up being really advantageous for you. And you can get a lot of experience and like maybe work the contract for a year and like quit and then go get another job kind of like, you know, easily or more easy than a full-time position and work there for some time. And you kind of can get a lot of exposure that way and, you know, have kind of less, less responsibility. Um, mm. So that's, that's kind of why I like, that's why I like being a contractor, to be honest. It's pretty good. No, I, I, hey, you, 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 you got to go back to that number. How much did you ask them for again? Uh, 180 k. God, to drop my other. <laughs> God, <laughs> you asked them for 180 k. Mean, Holy shit, that's big time. I mean, compared to like you know those other Fang software engineers, yeah. like, well, I guess 180 k base cash is it's kind of a lot actually but as a as a contractor like usually you, you don't get like equity or like stock yeah. or anything like that yeah um but like i don't i don't really i don't care about that to be honest because i don't i'm not trying to wait for the vesting period for that so i don't even like I don't even care. <laughs> no i like i like that josh that's a that's a good that's a good take on it right like i've always been a a full-time guy i've only worked for two companies in my entire life right so Oh, wow. You know, one of the things that you you said was, and not only what you said, it's just your actions. Your actions are, I want a little bit of this, I want a little bit of that, I want a little bit of this, I want a little bit of that, I want a little bit of this, I want a little bit of that. I want a lot of knowledge. And you choose to get education that way, but you also choose to work that way as well, right? A lot of times at full-time role, you don't get that much exposure if you're working full-time for a company, right? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of times people want to kind of pigeonhole you where you're good at. You're like, all right, you know what? Yeah. If I go the contractor role, if I want to do, you know, security operations, I can do that for a while. Right. And if I want to work on the um, the the coding side of things, I can leverage my computer science degree and work on the coding side of things. But I can get a job as a contractor versus a full time you know, a uh, worker, right? Because if you're in cybersecurity in a Microsoft full time, a lot of times they're not going to say, okay, well, you can go into our development organization and work on that product as a developer, right? That takes quite a bit of time to be even be able to do yeah. that. You're saying, you're saying, you know what? Yeah. I'm done with this. My contract is over or I'm choosing to terminate my contract and I will choose <laughs> to go on this side when I want to do it myself. So you, you are creating, you know, the, the type of roles that you want, but also you're creating the path that you want to be in as well too. So I think that's fantastic. 